here we are. After a few requests here and there, we have decided to clean up the Rover and we have brought her to a beautiful private property to give you our review on the Stockman Rover. In between our day jobs, we have been travelling in our turtle-like caravan for a year and a half now and we can say without a doubt that we love it. And to be honest, after coming straight from years of tent life, it wasn't hard to fall in love with this van. Sit back, grab a drink and let us take you on a tour of our home away from home. Our van is the mid-range model from Stockman. The base model, the Explorer, was pretty basic with no fridge, awning or shower. And the deluxe model, the Ultra, had a TV and air conditioning that we just had no need for. So we stuck with the Intrepid model. When choosing the Rover, we had three main wants. A bed that doesn't need set up every time, minimal poles needed and a spot for a toilet. And we think the Rover ticks all these boxes and probably more. I won't go into all the specs and differences with the models here. You can jump onto the Stockman website to check out all the nitty gritty details for yourself. One upgrade in the Intrepid model that we absolutely love is the DO35 hitch. In conjunction with the ARC XO500 jockey wheel, it makes hitching and unhitching the van super easy, quick and hassle free. Plus the big sturdy wheels on the ARC jockey wheel is great on soft boggy ground. This hitch and jockey wheel combo has never skipped a beat in the year and a half we have been using it. When you get down and look under the Rover, it comes with 17-inch alloy wheels, four basic stabilising legs and a large 120-litre stainless steel water tank. The Rover tows with ease and tucks in behind Brian's Triton perfectly. The galvanised chassis and the independent suspension make for an easy drive on and off the road. When we purchased the Rover, we were told she could take on over 90% of our Australian roads. Although we have taken her all over New South Wales, through Victoria and up to Queensland, we admit we haven't properly tested this claim yet, but we are definitely working on it. One of the things that really sold us on the Rover was the kitchen. The sturdy locks and the strong strutted door made it a breeze to open and close. The kitchen is simple and streamlined to stock up and use. We opted for the Sizzler Deluxe for the cooker. On a windy day, it is sometimes hard to use, but with a few wind blocks placed around, it's a small issue that doesn't affect us much. We do love how the gas point for the cooker is tucked behind the wheel arch. It's a good hidden away spot to avoid damage while travelling. I love the gallery style setup of the Rover kitchen. It's functional and it also looks damn good. The sink is just your basic sink and tap with a button to power the pump right there within reach. Cupboards have great clip button latches. The only struggle is remembering to push them closed when you set off on the road. Trust me, I have forgotten to close them more times than I should have, and I've regretted it every time. The drawers are sturdy and have beautifully smooth runners. All the cupboards and drawers have plenty of space to store all of your knickknacks and bits. The 
stainless steel bench is great when cooking and preparing food and there is generous storage cupboards underneath. The batteries take up a fair amount of space under here, but there's still plenty of space for all your cool camping bits. The Dometic fridge is the size of a bar fridge, 107 litres with a freezer compartment at the top. Thank God we got to say goodbye to the humble Essie. The Rover comes with a vented fan to air the kitchen when you have the door shut to travel. Our fan hasn't really worked properly since we got it, unfortunately. Even after getting it repaired the first time, it has now stopped again. It hasn't seemed to affect the fridge in any way, but a bit of a bugger nonetheless. The fridge can struggle and pull a lot of power in the hot weather, but we carry a spare solar blanket to catch more rays and a small generator for emergencies. In winter, you will have no trouble at all. The next stop, the cabin doors and windows. The latches on the doors and windows are easy to use. The large windows allow for a lovely breeze through the cabin and there is a super handy system built into the window to allow you to have the windows wide open, cover them with a screen, or block out the world completely. We have noticed if you open and close the doors too much while the block out screen is down, the screen will pop out from the sides a bit, but it's as easy as running your finger along the edge to pop it back in. The cabin itself is super cosy. The queen size bed was a little too firm for us, so we added a bamboo topper to the mattress and now we sleep in padded lifts. The biggest issue with the bed area is probably changing the sheets on the bed. You have to tuck yourself down pretty low to get down to the foot of the bed, but hey, a little gymnastics is a small price to pay, and it can also be entertaining to sit back and watch for your other half. With storage above your feet, the cupboard with the control system is located just inside the cabin doors. With all the controls for the whole rover here, we especially love the speaker system that is mounted inside and outside of the cabin. We have been known to phase the sound to the inside speaker to play music in the cabin to drown out noisy campers outside. It works a treat. Above this is the solar control. Admittedly, we are not very savvy when it comes to our solar knowledge, so if you have any great solar for beginners videos, let us know in the comments. We really like the storage behind the bed head. We keep books, beach towels, and all our other bits in here, nice and safe away from weather, dust, and any sticky fingers that may be around. We also added hooks above this area to hang our hats and other bits that we don't want squished. The label on the roof vent tells you to open before sleeping. We often crack a window as well because, you know, suffocating in your sleep would put a huge downer on your camp trip. But, all jokes aside, it is possible to open the vent but not let the rain in, so don't stress too much. So, we move on again to another star of the show. The 30 second wing awning is fantastic. We have never actually timed how long it takes us to swing this out, but I must admit I have felt bad on many occasions watching other campers struggle with gazebos and awnings while ours just swings out and locks in. We were caught in a windstorm at Gundagai a little while back that ripped our awning, but nothing a needle and some fishing line couldn't fix. So unless it is a dead still day, we always put up the extra support poles and tie it down just for good measure. The awning has extras that include four walls and a side tent for extra room. Let us know in the comments if you would like to see a full setup of our awning. We nearly opted out of this little side table. So glad Stockman convinced us to get it. It is so handy. 
The shower and hot water system on the Rover did take some figuring out, but it's a great little shower now. Right around from the sink, it makes doing the dishes so much easier. We replaced the original shower tent with a Nomad brand tent. Again, in my hatred of tent poles, I upgraded. And we are quite happy with it now. Let us know if you would like to see a full look at the shower and toilet area in a future video. The top of the Rover has some roof racks. We often tie the kayaks up here and also the solar panels are housed at the front. The side ladder is also an extra we would recommend. Without it, it would be so hard to get on top of the Rover. The storage box at the front of the Rover is large and easy to access. And again, the doors have lovely sturdy locks to open and close without any trouble. If we had our time again, we probably would have upgraded to a stone guard as our storage doors have copped a battering over the year and a half from all the dirt tracks. And with all that, it's time to make a cuppa and sit down to wrap up this Rover review. We originally started our caravan journey looking at pop-up campers. Disheartened by those damn poles and lengthy setup times, we expanded the search to caravans. But alas, they were too bulky and hard to tow. When I came across the Rover, I just couldn't get it out of my head. We were lucky to get in before word got out about how cool these little campers were. Now we see a growing list of owners picking up their brand new turtle campers on Facebook groups across the country. We don't blame them. If Brian and I had our time over again, we would buy another. The quality, the thought out accessories and the different quirky nature of the Stockman Rover would definitely have us coming back for more. Thanks for sticking with us. Feel free to chuck us some questions about our travels with the Rover if you have any. We will do our best to answer. There is no sponsorship or paid ads here, just our own opinions. If you like this kind of stuff, give us a like and a subscribe. We appreciate every single one of you. Peace out and happy travels.